I grew up seeking adventure. I even thought I'd be an explorer someday. As it turns out, as teacher and director of technology, I kind of am one. See, we explore as educators new routes to differentiation, student achievement, technology integration, and a myriad of other things. To excel at our profession and to serve our ever changing student population, we must explore. We must embrace change and become beacons of lifelong learning. That's why I chose a career in education, and it's what drives my work as a technology director today. Back in 2002, my wife Nora and I were living in this comfortable little rental house in a comfortable little suburb outside of Minneapolis. We shared a car, so I walked to my teaching job and Nora drove to hers. I was closing in on my 10th year of teaching. We didn't have kids yet, and our landlord had offered to sell us a little rental house. We considered it briefly, settling into life in the suburbs, but instead, we decided to seek adventure, to explore, to do something extraordinary, to shake it up. We'd always spend time traveling in the wilderness. So Nora and I embarked on a four month, 3,000 mile canoe trip paddling across Canada from the Minnesota border to the Arctic Ocean. It's a distance roughly comparable to traveling from New York to LA with a brief stop over here in Minnesota. We paddled through spring floods, the heat of summer, fall colors, and the onset of Arctic winter. In fact, People were running snow machines and sled dogs in Inuvik when we finished, and the riverbanks were freezing up. The trip gave us a new perspective on the importance of being present to the tasks at hand, a lifetime of memories, and the gift of uninterrupted time together. Really, if you ever want to do something life changing for your marriage, a four month canoe trip is a pretty good place to start. <laughs> We had to get leaves of absence from our job to complete the route. So, to sell the idea to our school districts, we built this website so our students could follow along and track our progress. Now, building a website is a relatively easy task now, but our trip happened eight years before the iPad, seven years before you had to get one of those converter boxes or buy a brand new TV because everything went digital, six years before the Kindle, five years before the iPhone and Google Apps, four years before Twitter, three years before、uh, YouTube, two years before. Facebook and Gmail, a year before Skype. So we came up with this 2002 solution. <laughs> we traded off handwriting journal entries, and this is actually a great exercise to live your life in such a way that it makes an interesting story to tell, and then to actually spend time each day reflecting and thinking, how can I share this with other people? Anyway, every week or so when we got to a small village, we'd beach our canoe and head straight to the grocery store because. Somehow, every grocery store had a fax machine. I don't know, maybe this one still does. <clears throat> anyway, we'd rip the pages out of our journal, fax them to our parents here in Minnesota. They typed them up, emailed them to my sister out in Seattle. She and her husband kindly posted them to our website for us. It was a flawless 2002 system, really. <laughs> <clears throat> we still have some of these、uh, fax journal pages. And even the handwriting is so evocative for us. The dates, the distances, the small excerpts all have meaning. July 24th, day 40, Sturgeon Weir River. We're camped on a beautiful spot beside a small set of rapids. Day 48, Wood Lake, Saskatchewan, windbound. Day 61, Churchill River. The rain today was misty most of the time, but we got some serious downpours. Day 79, Athabasca River, 30 miles. Day 105, 56 miles today, we're camped just north of Wrigley on the Mackenzie River. By day 90, we were really immersed in our surroundings. And Nora wrote, It's been something magical about our trip since we got onto the Slave River eight days ago. It's hard to pinpoint, but something's different here, something that wants to wrap around us and not let go. We've talked many times in the past week or two about moving here for a year, year or two, wintering over in the bush somewhere. Everything about our time on the slave has been extraordinary. Crisp fall days, brilliant turning leaves, the dancing northern lights, big beach fires without bugs at night, mist on the river in the morning, and people living a life we admire. These journal entries, that website, they were originally designed for our students and families, but it got shared around. And pretty soon we started getting emails from Germany, Japan, New Zealand, I don't know, Colorado. 
uh, suddenly our trip took on new meaning, a wider audience. We got notes wishing us luck on a long portage, for example. And I felt like a student who publishes a paper or a project online and suddenly gets feedback from outside the school walls. I wanted to do more of this kind of work. So when we returned, I pursued my master's in instructional technology at the University of Minnesota. As I began applying those research-based concepts I was studying, I found they were transforming my very pedagogical approach. I was integrating new teaching strategies and technologies with the curiosity, excitement, and awe that travelers feel when they first arrive at a destination. And I came to realize that technology and exploration not only complemented each other, but were nearly one and the same. I'm not the first person to draw this conclusion. Technology speeches and headlines are filled with metaphors for exploration. Like this quote from Jeff Bezos about the fun of inventing and pioneering. He says that even our failures, our blind alleys, can sometimes lead us to our broadest avenues. The greatest fulfillment and the broadest avenues I've found in my own professional career have been when my learning curve has been the highest. That's why I love my job as a technology director today. Back when I was a fifth grade teacher, my students read this book about uh, Shackleton's ill-fated and storied 1914 expedition, where he and his entire crew survived unimaginable hardship and grueling conditions in Antarctica. I spent hundreds of hours learning to write and tweak HTML code to build this website that accompanied the novel. Each section was geared to meet multiple types of learners. There was music, video, audio, images, differentiated questions at every level of bloom and every angle of gardener. At the end of the novel, my students had this completely open assignment where their main directions were to spend a good deal of time producing a piece of creative work that expressed their understanding of the novel and that they were excited to pursue. The diversity of paths my students chose to follow was astounding. My students write, wrote, filmed, directed, starred in and edited movies, wrote and performed plays, drew epic comic books, built video games, wrote and performed original songs and musicals, built dioramas, learned Photoshop. And these projects displayed phenomenal results, in part because Shackleton's exploration of, or example of exploration and endurance is so compelling but also in part because I expected the student learning curve to exceed or at least match the effort that I put into developing all the materials in the first place. Moreover, technology gave my students the kind of tools needed to produce the same kind of quality work that we adults create. That raised the bar for everyone. My students had become explorers. Explorers of lifelong learning. Explorers of new ways to express their creativity and their understanding. This uh, teaching coach I was working with at the time said something to the effect of, if this garners such fantastic student results, why don't you do it for every novel you read? It was a fair question, but man, it was so much work. How could I spend hundreds of hours building some differentiated website for every novel? I have other hobbies in my life after all. I want my marriage to flourish, to be a good father to my children. I, I run, I garden, I work on our house, I play music with a band of friends. These activities also promote lifelong learning. Only years later did I realize the magic wasn't in the website at all. I didn't need to build some differentiated website for every novel I read. I just had to model ongoing and intrinsic learning for my students. There is an excitement and a vulnerability in this kind of teaching and learning. As educators, we are mirrors. When we model it for our students, they will mirror it back. This is powerful, and it's exactly why we, as educators, are perfectly poised to integrate technology. We are people who have chosen to spend our lives, our entire working careers, in learning institutions. We practice good spelling and proper grammar with our students. When we write problems on the board, we show our work because we want our students to do the same. Shouldn't the bar be even higher for lifelong learning? Technology integration is important because it encourages teachers to learn from students, to learn in front of students. But in education, we often hear another analogy, that technology equals change, as in well, I don't know, we've had a lot of change around here these last few years with these uh, Google Apps, this new LMS, these digital report cards. 
These conversations are the opposite of lifelong learning. In these conversations, change is a negative, a holdover. There was this time back in the day when if you mastered the overhead projector, you were set for a decade or two of educational technology innovation. <laughs> that does not exist anymore. There's not one piece of technology you can master and then be set. But change can be motivating, transformative. Technology is pushing us as educators to iterate, to invent, to pioneer, to shake it up, to succeed, and occasionally to fail, just like adventure, just like learning. So consider this. If you've been teaching 10 years or more, are you a better teacher now than you were a decade ago? I hope so, but not because you're, do, you're doing everything the same. You're better at the craft of teaching. You've got more tricks up your sleeve. You understand that proximity is more effective than raising your voice. You've got more ways to differentiate, assess, and engage your students. You've changed for the better. And you've got better tools. I read that my iPhone has 240,000 times the computing power of the 1970s era Voyager 1 spacecraft. And that thing just left our solar system. <laughs> Teachers in the 1970s could hardly have imagined such a powerful computer. We and our students are carrying them around in our pockets. What are you doing to take advantage of that technology? What are you doing to switch up your pedagogical practice? What about me? Will I be a better technology director in 10 years? Will I do things differently? Will I change? I hope so. Asking us to change isn't asking too much of ourselves as educators. It's asking us to display the exact same progress and growth that we demand from our students. Think about it. What do we call change in students? Achievement, AYP, meeting growth targets. And just like students, the more we explore, the more we look into new technologies, change our pedagogy, ask more questions, explore more. Does this mean we can take on a million things at once in the name of exploration and change? No. We can't learn everything at once, just as we can't visit all the places on our bucket list at once. But learning changes us, just like travel does. We progress from one place to another and pick up wisdom along the way. Therefore, we must scaffold our experiences in the same way that we plan an itinerary or map out our curriculum. And because the technology landscape is always changing, as soon as we are ready, there's always new concepts, solutions, tools, apps ready for us to explore. Of course teaching is challenging, but it's also fun, just like adventure, just like learning. As educators, we have chosen a career in an industry whose greatest measure of success is change. We only succeed when our students progress and grow. We are therefore compelled by our own professional choice to model lifelong learning, to mirror lifelong learning. That same love of learning that drove Nora and me to paddle across Canada can fuel your exploration of better lessons, better student achievement, better schools, even better school systems. So I challenge each of you to mirror lifelong learning, to shake up your teaching and your leadership with technology, to embrace change as a measure of your own professional success, and to keep exploring, to always keep exploring. Thank you.